always look on the bright side of life. Always Hello. look on Hello. the light Hello. side of Hello. life. Hello everyone, Darren from Beer Sweden here. Um, if life seems I'm jolly rotten, there's so many people. Um, I, I, uh, good, good evening by the way. I, um, I, um, I woke up this morning, I tell you, hello everyone, Darren Beer Sweden, episode whatever it is. Um, I woke up this morning, uh, we're doing a s extra filming, today is actually last week for us, I think that's right Trev, uh, because I'm going down to Stockholm next week, over the weekend, so we just thought we'd film an extra little episode for you that we can put in next week. Does that make any sense? Um, and I woke up this morning, so today is April the 30th, and there's snow all over the grass again, Trev. And I've lived, I've lived through the winter, five months of snow. It all disappeared, now it's back, and it's making me grumpy. And Liverpool lost last night to Atletico Madrid. We're in the World Cup, though. We are in the World Cup. We, actually, that is a good point. We are in the World Cup, and actually, I'm going down to Stockholm on Monday to have the most extreme lineup of brew dog beers ever seen in this country. 14, none, 14 brew dog beers in one session. I'm going to sit down and drink 14 brew dog beers and get back up again, hopefully. So that's something to look forward to. And on Wednesday, actually, I'm flying to Helsingborg and I'm going to have dinner with Garrett Oliver. Garrett Oliver, the brewmaster from Brooklyn Brewery, the brewmaster's table author, legend. Um, so that's actually something to look forward to, Trev. So Sounds all right, doesn't it? Thinking about it, I'm quite, actually quite chirpy all of a sudden. So let's, that's, anyway, not the reason that we're going to, we're, we're sitting here today talking um, about beer. We are going to talk about ageing beer. I don't know if you've seen, but if you are a regular uh, follower of Beer Sweden's fan page on Facebook, all right, can you throw that up, Trev, for us? Uh, you'll see that I asked a few days ago about you know, what sort of things you wanted to read about, or read about, to, to, for, for me to talk about on, on Beer Sweden TV. And one of the topics was ageing beer. So here we are. I'm going to talk today about ageing beer. Can you age beer? Of course you can. There are certain types of beer that age a lot better than others, and there are some that you should never age. Uh, you should drink them as soon as you get them. Um, so uh, we're going to look at some of the beers that age better than, than, than others. Um, how long can you age beer for? Hell of a long time. Actually, probably longer than I've got left. To be honest with you, there's some beers that age very comfortably for up to 25, 30 years, become very complex during that time. What does aging do to beer? Well, generally, the sorts of effects that aging will have on beer is that it will make the malty type characters in, in a beer push up to the front, to the fore, and the bitter hop sorts of vibes in beers will soften out and they will sort of move to the edge of the beer. So over time, beer actually becomes a little bit more wine-like, to be honest with you, more sort of Madeira-like, sherry-like in terms of flavour. But this only happens to certain types of beer. So um, let's have a look at the types of beers that we can age. Uh, sort of golden rules of ageing beer. Rule number one, beers with a lot of hoppy content, with a hoppy type of character, don't age very well. Okay, because hops over time kind of break down, they degenerate. Uh, the, you know, the fun of hops often is the spicy sort of bitterness behind them. Uh, but over time, that dulls down. So um, beers like IPAs, for instance, um, APAs, I think we tried Sierra Nevada on the show just the other day, uh, the Pale Ale, fantastic when it's fresh, zingy, lively, wow. Give that two or three years and it suddenly becomes flat and boring and uninteresting, but not trend. Sometimes, what do you do? Pilsners, uh, lagers, um, you know, light beers like that, absolutely not the sort of things you want to be aging at all. Uh, you know, they're supposed to be drunk fresh, um, so don't even think about uh, putting those away, cellaring them. Um, so they're the beers that you shouldn't age, but what about the beers you should age? Well, here's a sort of selection of some of them here, and I'm going to hold them up for you, Trev, and just go through them. Um, the first one... Am I there? Can you see that? The first one is a Trappist beer. Uh, basically, uh, any type of Trappist beer can be aged, and not only can it be aged, it should be aged. Uh, Rochefort is one of my favourites here. Uh, this one actually says on the label, uh, it's got a shelf life, or best before date, of 2014, and I'll give it all of that. Maybe I'd leave it even a little bit longer. So your quadruples, your triples, your doubles, all of them, Belgian strong ales. Here's another one, 
Belgium Strong Ale. Look at this little beauty here. Still an act, right? This one is, uh, just turn it around here. This one is for my own little cellar. Some of these I've got from the Susan Malaga today. Um, some of them actually I've got from my own little cellar. I've got a little cellar full of goodies. This one's from 2006. Um, I'll probably be drinking that for Christmas uh, this year. Um, let's have a look at another one. Carnegie Porter. Now, this is a Swedish beer. Quite light in terms of ABV, 5.5%, but it does age actually pretty well. I drank a Carnegie Porter that was from 1978 last year, uh, and it really was still a very drinkable porter. Very smooth, uh, all those sort of rough roasted flavours had rounded out quite nicely. It was like drinking Oh Boy for grown-ups. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, another one, Strong Ales. This one's for the United States, North Coast. Uh, old Stock Ale, 13% this little puppy. Um, I've had this since 2006, another 2006er. Actually got dust on it, look at that Trev, look. Huh? Talk about wine, look, we do it here with beer. Um, perhaps one of my clap, well, I don't know where to go next. Fuller's, Vintage Ale. Every year this comes out people, it's a good one. I recommend that you buy one of these every year and keep it. Um, and perhaps my favourite, favourite ageable beer, barley wine. Uh, barley wine, which is a beer, uh, despite the name, um, tends to be incredibly strong, um, normally starting around 9 to 11 to 13 um, degrees in terms of alcohol. This one's 11.7%. Uh, Thomas Hardy's, it's a classic in the beer world. Uh, unfortunately, this may be the last year that they've actually produced them, but I've, I managed to get my hands on a few of them. This one is from 2005. It's already got five years under its belt, and I'm gonna give it at least, Trev, another 10. Okay, I'm gonna give this one, I'm gonna let it really express itself. Um, and finally here, um, I've got um, a beer that a lot of people um, forget to age, but um, Lambics, Gerzas, uh, these types of beers uh, really do benefit from a few years. Um, they attenuate beautifully, and that means that any of the yeast that's still in there attacks what's left of the sugar, and it makes it very sherry-like, uh, almost dry, sort of bony dry sort of finish to it. So that also is a beer that ages very well. Um, there is a golden rule, or there is a general rule about aging beers, they should be 8% and above. I don't necessarily believe that, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you get hung up on it too much. Carnegie Porter, for instance, 5.5%, but it does age well. But I do believe malt, malt characters, because malty beers, they age better, as I say, than hoppy beers. Um, that, to me, is a better rule. Um, corks. Do you lay them down or, or put them upright? I tell you what, put them upright. Because corks these days, quite frankly, they're so well done that there's going to be very little chance of shrinkage or anything like that. So it, I recommend absolutely that you store your beers upright. Um, enemies of ageing. What sort of things should you avoid when you're trying to age beers? Well, there's three major enemies of ageing. Number one is your willpower. OK, uh, I can promise you when I went to get this bottle, or well not that one, this bottle out to my cellar, I was looking at all the other bottles and I'm pretty tempted to crack one open after this show. So you're the number one, probably, biggest enemy of ageing beers. Number two, light. Make sure that your beer is not stored under a strong light source because light is the enemy of beer. It can get to it and it can start breaking it down. So light is important. Make sure it's in a dark cool place. Temperature is another one. It really doesn't matter what temperature it is. Obviously the warmer it is, the faster the beer evolves in the bottle. We'd recommend somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal cellar sort of temperature. Uh, the main thing is it's consistent. You don't want peaks and troughs of temperature. Make sure it's a consistent, stable sort of environment. And the last tip that I would give you is that whenever you go and buy a beer, for instance a Carnegie Porter, Buy two, at least two. Drink one now so that you've got a reference point, you know what it tastes like, and then save the other one for a few years um, so that you've got something to compare it to. So always buy two or three or four beers and put some away and drink some fresh. That's it really, that is my little lady beer. Now normally I'd say cheers and beer trip, I don't want to do now, what should I do? Good luck England. Good luck England. Good luck, well it's not yet is it? We've got, we've got a little way to go, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm off to Stockholm now to have a little bit of fun, uh, but we'll do check back next week because we've got a lot coming your way on Beer Sweden TV. Until then, cheers and beers.